Celebrity Book Club. Welcome back to QVC. I'm Karen LaFonda, your host of your favorite QVC little special. I'm always on air from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m., 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. We have an amazing man with an amazing product here today. Everyone, welcome Mike Lindell, CEO, inventor of My Pillow. Mike, how are you? Hi, Karen. I'm great. Uh, I'm really excited to be back here. Of course, I've got my pillow. I've got 60,000 pillows in a warehouse in Duluth, and I'm so excited to unload this merchandise on your audience. I know they're going to love my pillow, and if they don't love it, they're going to get a 100% guarantee payback in the mail. And they're made in the USA right here, right? I believe in making products right here at home, right here in Kalakaway, Minnesota. I love my hometown. I love Americans. I love giving jobs to people. Oh I love giving God, second chances. Local. We've already had 100 sold, and we have 90000 left. Oh, okay. And again, oh, our price is still thirty nine ninety nine. Now, Mike, what, what makes this pillow so special? Let me tell you, Karen, okay? First of all, I just had a stroke six seconds ago. What are the odds that I have a stroke live on national television, and I keep selling my pillow, okay? But this kind of shit happens to me all the time time. I used to be a crack addict. I used to be a coke addict. I used to be a card counter. I was divorced. I was married. I killed myself. And I'm here and I'm telling you, there's nothing better than this pillow. I met Mike on a bender myself in 1987. Seven days in a greater Biloxi casino hotel combination. Well, we just started smoking crack for seven days and did leave the hotel room. Well, my life turned around. (laughs) Karen, let me tell you that that week in Biloxi was one of the most incredible weeks of my life. I never thought I'd see the sunlight again. But at the end of that week, you told me you looked at me and your eyes could barely open and you were crazy. And I said, you looked like a $2 prostitute. And you said, I know. Oh my God, we only have... 1,000 pillows left. These pillows are going to change your life just like Christianity changed Mike and I's life and helped us quit drugs and gambling and prostitution. Carol, let me tell you something. It was God who told me to use three different kinds of foam in my pillow. God came to me in a dream and he said, it's not just one foam. It's not just two foams. It's going to be three kinds of foam that you got to put in there. We have 10 pillows left. Do you hear that, QVCers? Do you hear that, LaFondians? 10 pillows left. Karen, I am going into cardiac arrest. I'm going to need you to ask me to call me an ambulance right now. Okay. A local American oh, made okay. ambulance. Okay. Uh, we have one pillow left. Okay. Can we get medics on the set? I think Mike is having a heart attack. Okay. He's passed out now. Oh, and we're sold out. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll be on again at 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. Have a great day and thanks for shopping. QVC. that knocking at the door it's all your friends you filthy whore your husband's gone and we've got books and a bottle of wine to kill it's hollywood it's books it's gossip i'm shook it's memoirs it's martinis it's studio 54 it's celebrity book club come read it while it's hot celebrity book club tell your secrets we won't talk celebrity book club no boys are allowed celebrity book club Club. Buzz me in, I brought the Cuervo. Hey, hey best, best friend! friend! Ah! <laughs> I am so excited. I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm Yes, vibrating. about a book, but just <laughs> in general. No, there's nothing more delectable than the powder between two lifelong best friends. <laughs> to quote the New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, you know, I said this before the New Yorker came along and wrote a rave review of our podcast. I said, you know what's delectable? The powder. <laughs> Just straight up patter. Just straight, you know, I'm not talking about back and forth, okay? I'm That's talking banter. about. All right, that is banter. I am talking about patter. Patter is, it's both easier and more difficult. It's jazzy, exactly. Yeah, it's jazzy, you know? it's cats. And, you know, we are just cats. And I am making it a goal this year. Fuck New Year's resolutions. Okay, I love that. How Anytime about, resolutions. Well, I'm thinking a little more like September because isn't for me that's when resolutions really start. Right. Back rock, to rock. school. It's real. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yes. Go to see more live jazz. 
That is so doable. <laughs> it's a- Although, if I may, just if I can just butt in here really quickly. <laughs> totally. So, one thing about resolutions is people say things, oh, do more exercise, do more jazz. You know what I mean? It's so vague and it's kind of easy to not meet a goal when there isn't a clear goal. So, how about this? Yeah. I, Lily Marotta, am going to go see one live jazz show every month. Mm, right. Instead of just say, oh, and then I'm always like on the Blue Note website, but right. it's not the day. Right. And just you're like, it- oh, is this going to be my infamous time going to jazz? <laughs> no. Now no. you're going to be like, oh, crap, September's almost over, and I haven't ducked into a jazz club with my longtime girlfriend. Right. Boom. Even though, you know, our first, like, hang. Was that a jazz club? Well, no, we literally ducked into a jazz club. I thought that was, like, a much later date in your no, career. No, it was, like, the first time. Wow. It was, like, kind of like a date. It was, like, we went to a bunch of group things. Okay, right, right, right. And then we split off from all the group things. And we were, like, walking to her apartment. And there was literally a live jazz band. And I was, like, well, we have to go in. Okay, well, now you absolutely have to, like, repeat this. So yeah. you can, like, keep the spark keep in that marriage alive. Keep the spark alive. You know, go see live jazz. Take samba classes. You know who kept... Things this, alive, <laughs> things kept the spark alive. alive. <laughs> yeah, somehow is still alive. A little feller <laughs> by the name of uh, Mike, Mike Lindell, Lindell, CEO of My Pillow, and now My Pillow, My Coffee, and My Slippers, <laughs> <laughs> and the author of the book "What Are the Odds?" <laughs> From crack right. addict to CEO. The CEO. By Mike Lindell. Okay. So yeah, this is the book we read this week. Mm, I know I've said this a thousand times, but this maybe one of the, the craziest insane. Insane books we've ever read. <laughs> I can't stop saying that, but it's oh, it's often true in its own way. Yes. You know? So this book, let's just start with the cover because it's rare Great that a cover. <laughs> <laughs> it's rare that a cover jumps off the page, so to speak, like this. It's a hologram. It's a. <laughs> it is a hologram. It is. It has a dual image technology to it. It's kind Which of a. Is what holograms are. <laughs> Okay, well, not no. I feel like a hologram is like a fake image or whatever. I thought a hologram is always something that changes. Like, oh, it's a rock now; it's a lion. No, because they're always being like the Kanye West hologram. It's like it's just it's just a fake version of him. You know what I mean? Oh, you're right. When they do Britney and it's a hologram, and right? You can That's walk not because it. it's like Britney and it's also like a rock. <laughs> It By is- the way, I watched this like TikTok of her kids recording her yelling at them. The like, Kevin Federline released last night. Oh wait, and this has to do with their whole drama. Yeah, and we're gonna get into Let's that. Let's get into that in the, the VIP, VIP lounge. lounge. Because <laughs> we're here for <laughs> celebrity gossip from like three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know you're gonna be asking for it. Okay, so the cover is <laughs> jury's out on whether or not this is a hologram, but it's like a weird plastic <laughs> that has two images in it that changes as you look at it. And the photo is him smiling as a current as you know his current ceo christian ceo with a little like onyx so silver he, cross yeah. hanging out of the button down shirt he wears a very qvc men's jewelry sold i would want to say like it's it's like it's mall it's, men's cross it's a little bit more understated than what i imagine like ramona sells in her like tchotchke wholesaler christian website so I've been on the site. There's actually so many options on, <laughs> on True Faith, but I, I guess it's like it's the onyx of it that makes it like also a little bit sold on national in National Enquirer. Y- yeah. where you're paying multiple payments. Yeah. Well, because I had a ring from QVC for a while that was like. I oh, guess it was cubic zirconium, right? Yeah. But I remember at the QVC store there being like onyx, like laid in gold, was like one of the popular options for men's jewelry. <laughs> okay, just being like, and this is it's like how you know you're a man is you buy onyx yeah. jewelry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so that's the like the and he wears a cross like yeah, it's over his like blue button down men's warehouse like. Well, it's, it's clearly like he's pulling it out so that you can see that he's a reformed Christian CEO now. Sli- his hair is like slicked back, and he's got this like. Same Big. molester mustache, but like happy smile and veneers. And then, so the other photo is him as a crack addict. Which was, by the way, so he was a crack addict for about 45 years. Like, <laughs> it's this whole book, you're like, how with everything, not even just the crack, you're like, how are you still alive? And he's like extremely, quote unquote, functioning. Well, yeah, and his whole thing is that he's always just like, most professional card counters like couldn't drink as much as I could. But I was knocking back 20, 25 <laughs> cocktails over the course of the night while making $16,000 counting cards at a riverboat casino in Mississippi and 
doing six eight balls of cocaine that I then turned into, into crack, crack with baking soda in my hotel room that they'd comped me because I was such a high roller, even but though I lost thirty two thousand dollars. Hotel room <laughs> in Tuscaloosa for then seven days because I met this guy Tony who had then changed my life and was the first person <laughs> to listen to me ever. So okay, and, yeah. yeah so and they're the, like, "How are you?" And then he's just doing this for like literally decades. Right. So the other photo is him, quote unquote. And this is like his turnaround when the whole book, you're like, this could have been any moment where his drug dealers had an intervention with him after he was up for eight days. And they were like, you're insane. We're and not he's like, give me your you. phone. I'm taking a photo of you. And this is the photo they took. And it's just like, he looks pretty bad. Um, yeah. Definitely like saggy, droopy. The hair is limp. Although but it's Harris still like, like still... mustache. I guess I've seen like worse addict photos. Yeah, for sure. He doesn't look that sunken. I wonder if that's because like because of his metabolism. Mid- yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just like I think he still is having like steak and lobster dinners that are comped by the Biloxi. He is having all these comped <laughs> steak and lobster. Okay, so so yeah, let's get into it. Um, I don't know if anyone is. If you're not familiar with my pillow, get your bootay down to Bed Bath and Beyond. Okay, have you ever let ra- lest lested rested lested, your head molested <laughs> molested your head under my pillow? I'm trying to think because I'll go to a Bed Bath and Beyond when I'm searching for a new pillow, and then you do that weird thing where you're standing, and then you just kind oh, of yeah. ninety degree yourself, yep. and you're like pillow, and you're just like <laughs> I'm trying to simulate something here, but it's not working. And so, I mean, it's possible, but nothing obviously that I remember and has stood out. And I was like, oh, I wish I had time to stop at a Bed Bath and Beyond before we recorded this. Yeah, no, and I am a busy working woman who uses better help for therapy mm-hmm. because I don't have time to even go to Bed Bath & Beyond exactly. to do pillow demos. Um, though I had a very Mike Lindell day because I was sending out t-shirts and also smoking tons <laughs> of crack. Tons and tons of crack. <laughs> and your marriage was falling apart, yeah, not to am- pry. <laughs> <laughs> that end, I was in an American-made <laughs> room. <laughs> and just like your best friend who's also your brother-in-law was just like scheming to like kick you out and steal the deed <laughs> to your warehouse in Chatuka, Minnesota. <laughs> but at the same time, I was also like living in his basement. Okay, so Mike Lindell, he's from Minnesota. So he's from Minnesota. I, I didn't know anything about him at all. I just like, I, all I know, he was kind of like this joke because like Trump had like allied himself with this pillow guy and it was right. so trumpy so like trump and then i think on both sides it was like people f- were more like trump be like trump you're lining yourself with this pillow guy and then there were pillow people who were like you're lining yourself, yourself with, with trump? trump and then you know classic yeah it's just like liberals being just like trump is so random and the only business that <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, like in his corner is this direct to consumer, consumer pillow and it and my pillow is the best selling direct to consumer product in the history of the world question mark i mean i feel like they're always saying that about um Scrub daddy. Right. But I saw it when I did a quick Google because I am a researcher. It yeah. said one hundred seventy five million dollars. Or he, maybe that's his personal net worth. And I feel like Lori's always being like, Scrub Daddy has sold a hundred eighty million dollars worth. After of I brokered sales the deal to get Scrub Daddy in, in bed, Kroger. bed Kroger, <laughs> Bed Bath and Beyond, and Home Depot, our sales now have jumped about nine hundred percent. So Mark Lindell, not even on Shark Tank. He's a QVC ho yeah. through and through. Although, they turned him down three times. I'm obsessed. Well, one, so Stephen and I also listen to the audiobook. This man is completely insane. Um, if you heard my impression in the cold open, that was pretty yeah. accurate, in my it's opinion. It's like, <laughs> it's read so fast in his just like crazy, gravelly dad voice. He's got crazy, like, gravelly Midwestern. He's got that accent. I love how he says uh, wash, mm-hmm. wash. Wash. He's like, I needed the pillows to be washable. <laughs> I mean, most Americans have a washer dryer, and they want to throw shit in there. That is true. And I was on his Instagram, and it was like so many random like stock photos that could also be photos from a forensic files <laughs> episode of like a woman now throwing their like dog pillows in a washer dryer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, there's been murders. I mean, at this point, there have been murders committed on a my pillow. Like so many. There's so much blood splatter analysis happening, <laughs> and, and they're like, the no, the way the blood went from my pillow to the my pillow dog. And then the my coffee is scattered everywhere. It's so insane that he hasn't murdered to our knowledge. I mean, there's so or witnessed. 
I actually don't think he is really capable of murder. I see him more as like accidentally murdering someone. Well, and there's then being a lot like, of like oh. near violence in this book. Absolute near violence. Um, there is someone kills himself in this book. There's also people who die oh, of addiction. Right. Yes, I guess I meant like gun knives. No, like... I'm surprised because like. I mean, there's the time that he jumps out of the school bus. There's the time that he's in that bad neighborhood in (laughs) St. Louis. He's always in a bad neighborhood and a cop is being like, what's a guy like you doing in a bad neighborhood like this? this, (laughs) Okay, so let's start. He's his childhood. He like his parents get divorced and he's like. Which he doesn't realize is a big deal until until he's in like. N.A. N.A. like decades later. Well, I feel like that's so classic Midwesterner to be so like, like you don't talk bad about your family and you're just so like, nothing's wrong. I mean, this we were saying with my um, boyfriend, boyfriend, friend of the pod, Chase, because we were like, is everyone in the Midwest an alcoholic not to pry? And he was kind of like, well... Yeah, like that's not like totally unfair of like a characterization, like especially of mid of like Minnesota and Wisconsin. Like, well, and, and remember my ex girlfriend's father also had his issues with alcohol, crack, cocaine, and crack as well. Yeah, I mean, I feel like nineties. That's Michigan, Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Greater Chicago. Greater area, Chicago. Yeah, sure. This book is also, yeah, I'll say it. And you can call us out, Steve and I being coastal elites and taking out a map and being like, where's Minnesota? <laughs> I mean, I know, I know exactly where Minnesota I is. I know where. Well, no, I'm always like thinking <laughs> Minnesota is like south and then it's like really north. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's giving super north boots. Because <laughs> it gets like, really cold there. Yeah. <laughs> But I think it's very Midwestern to be like, oh, I didn't have a bad childhood. Of course, like, I'm just a crack addict because I'm a crack addict. And, like, he's listening to all these people in, like, you know, drug. I don't know if you know if it's Narcotics Anonymous. It's some sort of group. And everyone's like, wah, 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 like, my childhood. And he's so like, buck up! You're a drug addict because you're a drug addict. And we're all just drug addicts because drug addicts. Like, not because. And then, like, he finally realizes that, like, he was sad about his parents' divorce. Yeah. And ultimately, don't get divorced <laughs> yeah. or your children will become drug addicts. That's the lesson from this book. Yeah. Um, and Lily, obviously, you've struggled with addiction to marijuana. Yes. And we have put you in a treatment facility m- numerous times <laughs> many, to no avail. Many times. Well, because, you know, as we've learned this book, when God is involved, it works better. Yeah. It's better if God is there. Celebrity Book Club. Celebrity book club. So he has this Midwestern <laughs> upbringing, <laughs> and he like and he's you know, always he, been like a hustler, always a hustler, always getting in trouble. Like these kids dared him to jump out of a school bus once, and he did. He's like, I should have broken my arm, but I didn't. Basically, this whole book is him just telling like one insane story after another, and he's always like doing crack while losing eighty thousand dollars, and then while getting arrested counting. while card counting, and then like a Mexican drug dealer is like brandishing a machete in his face, but then like the title deed is coming through on the house, but then he's yeah, having to he's lose his entire like, bar and get divorced. It's this thing where you're like flipping back because you're like he's like I sold my bar, but like. I needed more money, so I sold like the deed of the sale to a bookie that I was warned about. Yeah. <laughs> but and then the bookie is like making fun of me, and we're meeting at a hotel bar in Minneapolis. And then he's like doing a fake bankruptcy <laughs> to like right, get yeah. out to get out with the bookie. And then, but then is- the FBI is like, "Oh no, that's actually a fake." bankruptcy ring happening with judges so, in like, greater Minneapolis. And so the FBI is going to save you even though you're like also currently on trial for like fake robbing a gas station so that you could get arrested so you could like stop doing drugs for a week. I think like, read, read a okay, passage wait, me... so just to give our listeners kind of just uh Oh, this is when he's in like an insane car crash and he doesn't remember oh. how he got out of the car but the car is like totally yes. wrapped around a tree and he's just he like... was so tired. The one that where he was so tired from like working at the drive-in movie theater? Yes. Neither could anyone explain how I wound up in the farmer's yard. My collision with that giant oak had driven the engine block into my stepdad's front seat, the steering column almost through the rear window directly behind my head, and the driver's side door was jammed shut. How did I get out of the truck? I don't know. 
A series of near misses followed that accident, so many that I began to feel invincible. I fell into a lake and was trapped under a sheet of ice. I was nearly electrocuted by a bolt of power so massive that it shut down half the town. I bought a motorcycle and wrecked it twice, the second time on the way to a skydiving lesson, during which I smashed into the ground at 60 miles per hour because my parachute didn't fully open. Yes, I actually crashed my motorcycle and survived the skydiving accident on the same day and walked away. Year after year, things like this kept happening to me. Over and over, I asked myself, what are the odds? This is every page of the book. Yeah, it doesn't. It's like it's not like, oh, OK, well, now we're just in this random part of this book. It's like it's boom, boom, boom. And like the stories even when you think like you're going to be over his stories, because he'll even repeat his own stories. He'll do. Okay. This, it is the Prince very, part where he, he's in the makeup chair at his infomercial. He also keeps on calling the makeup artist, which I was obsessed with the artist. <laughs> and he goes, so the artist is listening to me. And she says, what, what happened with you and Prince? So I start telling her this crazy story, which we've already heard like maybe in another chapter. And it's like, the story is just like, he went into a bar with no white people and had their specialty drink that had 10 shots of liquor in it <laughs> with his wife and they drank and then oh he started like singing at the oh, bar and he, then singing. he did fully did karaoke yes because he he's karaoke. a show off and he's always like getting on a so bar. he did karaoke like in this story but then redoes the karaoke also when he's retelling the story to the guy like working the mixing board at this like big arena and then of course it turns out that he was singing telling the story about him doing karaoke prince karaoke to prince there kind of (laughs) is it's like there's this almost like nathan for you ask like solipsism in the way this book is written because like there'll be like the whole chapter where he's like there was a great storm like banging out the window like of our and like i was eighty thousand dollars in the hole and like my pillow was going under and i was a crack addict and then he's like and i started telling my son darren the story of his original card counting ring that he was in. <laughs> like, and that his grandfather, who was friends with Bugsy Siegel, and is from Deadwood. What? Okay, wait. And, and maybe... like invented gambling. Yeah, for you. Wait, and then he's like going in this full story about like going to Mississippi and like going to Vegas and like learning card counting from like Vast Demo, like the most incredible this man card counting is... teacher. He like, there would be a Nathan for you episode about him where Nathan for you is like, Okay, what like I feel like Nathan would be like, I have an idea. You sell me the deed to your business, but I'll pay you back with interest. And how about an idea that you give like three pillows out per one pillow? And he would be like, Yes. And like, but he almost invents those own schemes for himself. Like, one way he gets the pillows to start selling is he puts a pillow in like this entire hotel which I thought was genius. And then he gives like a card that's like, here's my number. After oh, and then using... there was a mini pillow on the little yeah. bedside table next to it to like be like, hey, you like this pillow? Like, Call us. But that it didn't work. But it worked. No, but then he got the article in the Star Tribune. Well, the article, the press got him all this. And we know this because the New York Times got us a huge bump in listenership. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> huge. But back to Deadwood for a second. And like, this is like, historically his history with gambling is that his like grandpa bob was in a gambling ring in deadwood famous hbo show like and bugsy siegel was like man i'm gonna go to vegas and his grandpa was like people just like to gamble no one needs the lights and then bugsy siegel went on to create vegas and boy was he wrong so sweetheart because you know, they love the neon my grandmother once told me the story that my dad was like your grandmother was like lying and was so random that like <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's very believe easy. women. Literally, <laughs> hashtag believe women. It is the story. My grandmother was like, "Yeah, like I had some uncles and like aunts, and you had some relatives who were like went to Vegas when it was nothing. They were like in real Darling, estate, it was all cactuses. yeah, and they were gonna start building up. But then it was like they got bought out or like lost a card game or something like that, and like left Vegas. But it was like it was very like the story of like we almost owned Vegas." We almost own Vegas. Yeah, like it was like they were gonna build something and then didn't, and like lost out in some real huh, estate deal. Yeah, same. I was supposed to be one of the original <laughs> investors in Resorts World Casino by JFK, and they were really aggressive in trying to court me. And so I had so many fantasies. Ultimately, I declined. Of like- 
of like what Girl. my life would have been if I was this Vegas heir and it was like me walking down this crazy multi spiral staircase into this like marble room. Oh, oh you thought oh it was like there was like so many hot tubs and bare skin rugs yeah, and pianos. Everywhere <laughs> and I was like, damn, if we'd only own Vegas. Well, I want to talk about card counting because this is one of his big like things that keeps so him afloat here's during the, thing the crack is, like, addiction. He is a genius. That's I know. I'm just so like when we were listening to this together, yeah, as a podcasting duo, and he's talking about Voss's this guy Voss his card counting class. I was like, there's no way if I took that class, I don't, I don't think. You couldn't memorize the matrices? <laughs> yeah, because it's so like double twos on threes, threes to the fives. Yeah. I mean, just to the you wall. know how to play blackjack, I, though. It's one of the main games I know how to play, yeah. gambling wise. You just have to get to 21. 21, right. Yeah. But right. obviously, it's easier if it's just you and the dealer, which Mike Lindell is always like, I want to go head to head with the dealer. And as you said, his, his trick, because all the pit bosses, once you start winning, yeah. they start looking. Yeah. And okay? also, hello, the bubble people. So he calls the security cameras the bubbles. And there's someone watching the bubbles. And you got the bubbles and you got the pit bosses. And they're always on your ass. So he does his little act. Which and is drink 20 is to 25 cocktails. Which is get absolutely wasted. But like still be able to like count into a six deck shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like the shoe is a term that I guess means a bunch of decks. And, and be really chatty because he's like... You think of card counters as these serious, like, sunglasses-wearing yeah. guys who are it, who are, like, you know. So here's what I don't understand about card counting. So yeah. card counting, it's not illegal, but the casinos don't like it. I thought it was illegal. See, I thought it was illegal, too, but the way he talks the, about the it. the movie 21. But he's always just being like, what we were doing was technically not illegal. It must be not the illegal in the just, state. Like, they would just, like, find him and, like, toss him out. They'd be like, this guy's counting. Like, don't ever come back here. And they, like, rough him up. Right. I bet if you're part of a card counting ring, because there's that movie 21. Which he says Kevin that Smith. he was almost a part of. Right. He's like, so, I was card counting and a consult. They were going to make a big Hollywood movie called 21. But then he was recruited to be, like, a potential leader of that crew. But then that crew got, like, arrested and disbanded, like, right before. Or they said other card counters like found them at that casino like at some riverboat and were like watching him and they were like we like what we see this also opened me up because it's like you know gambling we think Mohegan obviously Atlantic City this Vegas boats I was like it's like I know about riverboat casinos but from I the guess... movie Maverick with Mel Gibson and yes. Jodie Foster which is such a good film and like I feel like other 90s thrill, like the Pelican Brief maybe they're on a riverboat casino okay but then it. these other gambling towns that actually are not river like he's always at Tunica or Tusca Tunica Tunica so I got in my car to Tunica we're going to Tunica <laughs> and anyway just buckle list I want to go to these smaller I want to go to Tunica I want to go to Tunica so I told Karen that I would go to Tunica I would I would have 10,000 I would come back with 30,000 which would cover our debts um Anyway, card counting, I think we should take a card counting class. Yeah, I love DM taking... us if... Okay, but then I'm like, if it's legal, how can you just take this class? Because he was just well, like... Well, you find out, like, through the grapevine. But it just sounded very, like, they met at this... It was, like, a six-month class. They had a full... 900 bucks. It was $900. He, this guy had a full, like, casino floor built in the basement of this warehouse he was teaching so the class fab. in. And had all these former pit bosses as, like, teachers in the class. And I'm just like... This seems like a huge operation to, like, not be known if it's, like, technically illegal. When So he owns, like, three bars, which sounds like the most epic bars. This is before my pillow. Let's talk about Schmitty's for okay. a second. So a huge part of this book is about him owning and operating Schmitty's, <laughs> the badass local neighborhood bar. In Shaska, Minnesota. And it was just, like, the regulars, man, and they come in, and we'd talk and do shots. And he's just, like, the kind of butter who's, like, doing shots with... Constantly. And the this patrons. and this was the reason why he like kind of got into Coke and also owning bars. It was like a way for him to have friends. Yeah. Because he'd be like, Oh, it was so amazing that I own this bar where all these like, you know, working class guys would come in and they were all like friends and buddies. And then it's like the moment like he had to like talk to someone, he was like doing a thousand shots and doing Coke. Because yeah. he was like I mean social anxiety. Yeah. And I, you know, and I get it. You know what I mean? And we use drugs to not just numb the pain. To make but things more fun. To make us feel invincible. 
And, you know, when he was owning that bar. He started dart leagues, you know, baseball leagues. Little leagues. And he was doing, you think he'd do where he'd throw the napkins up into the ceiling fan. Which he called Schmitty's Snow. Schmitty's Confetti or whatever. Yeah, Schmitty's Snow. (laughs) (laughs) Schmitty's Snow. And I was like, it was literally just him buying napkins and throwing them in the air. No, no, no. But he would throw them into the ceiling fan. And then the ceiling Uh, fan would chop them up. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I was just kind of like, you're throwing napkins in the air? like. No, the fan was a key part of (laughs) the Schmitty's snow. It was a key component of that. (laughs) And then he does this other thing when um, he needs like the ceiling demolished. So instead of paying for ceiling demolishers, he just gets all the badass bikers who like go to his bar to just fuck it up. And like it, two birds with one stone because they would have made a big mess anyway. Right. You know, if they, they were come bad in, boys. They were to bad boys, bad. and they were tying one off and tying one on. And he was like, "Why don't you just like demolish my ceiling so I can install a new one randomly?" Um, and he also is married to love his life, Karen, for much of this book. Yeah. So okay, I don't. I have to say, he was like Karen's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Like I didn't think of her as such a looker in the photos. In well, here. I was actually wrote down in my notes that I think she's much hotter than his creep. Be Christian's second wife, oh, wait. Kendra, Kendra hold on. who's in the back, who just like is really like kind of giving like Mormon sisterhood, like where the hair is like too long, high bangs. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for <laughs> okay, this photo of him getting baptized in 2018, <laughs> yeah. like in Louisiana. It's so insane. Okay, here, let's just get to Kendra for a second. Because yeah. basically, okay. here's what I, wrote. I wrote that he was pussy whipped into Christianity. Yeah, it's like, but I'm like, so is the pussy that good? That's always what's so crazy. Like, damn, pussy is so good. Have you converted? And it's like, this woman seems so creepy and crazy. And, and he even random, says it. And they've never even met. And they're always like staying in separate hotel rooms because he's like, she was a Christian woman. He's like, and sometimes she was even too Christian for me because I'd be lost. And she would say, let's pray oh, about which this way. is Kendra? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I kind of thought that she was going to be, be like, like slamming, slamming Christian. buxom Christian. Like, I thought she was going to be so like. So GCB. Yeah. Like, but maybe just like more like titties and like maybe a little bit like curvier, like this curvy mm, femme. That dad-ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, show me Karen. So Karen, he meets. Karen is just like very Midwestern, like that where it's like you're a straight woman who's like really butch looking in this way and Karen and him even though yes they were like both like doing coke all the time but it sounded like they had honestly like a really beautiful marriage I'm yeah, like yeah their beautiful marriage where they were going to Toad's house and doing crack till 9am and it's like where are your four kids <laughs> and like what's amazing what? is he's be like yeah so at that time Heather our oldest was in um school for fine arts and I'm like <laughs> How are these kids even like doing job applications and you guys are straight up at toads like doing crack? But I think that this kind of proves the point that today's parenting like Yes, is too crazy. It's too crazy and it's like you actually don't need to be such a helicopter parent and such a tiger mom and like being so violin like twenty four seven. It's just like Because his oldest, the one who went to art school, she drew up the my pillow logo. Yes. Hello. She's a famous logo designer at <laughs> yeah. nineteen and her parents were crack addicts. So it's like you don't need to be you don't need to be like such an insane hover parent twenty four seven. And to quote Mike Lindell about the Trump kids. Oh you You can't fake good kids. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this was him quoting Pence. Oh, him quoting, quoting Pence. Quote Mike quoting Mike Pence. You can't fake good kids. He was like, and when I went to the stadium at the Republican National Convention. And I met Ivana, Eric, <laughs> Donald Trump Jr., such amazing, beautiful, and Tiffany, smart, beautiful, articulate. And Tiffany, beautiful, smart, articulate people, men and women. <laughs> So at some point, what I found was crazy about the relationship was that they both did crack because yeah. like he's talking about his crack addiction and like he first starts doing coke and then somebody at Toad's house, which is like the house they go to after party, like every night after Schmitty's, like someone brings crack and where he starts to notice that like everyone is sneaking off into bedrooms with spoons. And he's like, what's all this bedroom Hufflepuff about? <laughs> and, and, and then everyone's like, yeah, so it's actually kind of being like crack boots now and everyone <laughs> is just like fully doing spoon baking soda, like taking the coke and then doing crack stuff. And he's like, huh. And so he tries it once and he's like, this is whatever. And then he tries it a second time and that's when it all goes downhill. Yeah. Because he's like, it's Coke times 10, and it's amazing, and, you know, I mean, personally, I have no interest in doing crack. 
Um, Same. <laughs> <laughs> well, and have, again, I do feel like crack is very, not, and yes, we're 90s kids, but. Yeah, you know, so like people think... aren't doing crack. Well, I mean, Hunter Biden's still doing crack. But it's funny that similarities between this and the Hunter Biden book because um, they both describe crack in a similar way. Just of like doing it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you mean the process? The A, the and process the and getting the chore boy and like. And like, yes. And doing like, the makeshift pipe and then farming when you're looking for like any little bit I on will the rug. say, one, this book is so much better than Hunter's. Yeah. Two, Hunter does this thing where he downplays it, but also ups the romance of it. Yeah. Where he's like, we were in, you know, this squalor, shitty apartment. Like, it's more private school boy doing it. Like, yeah. and I was living with a homeless woman. I don't know. You're living in kind of an empty, like, one bedroom condo in DuPont Circle. And it's like, not like so squalor. And like, You're Mike just is being like, gross. kind of talking about the squalor, but not realize, like, he only, like, he's like, Oh, yeah. Actually, at one point, I realized, like, this apartment that we were doing crack in was pretty disgusting. There was guard poured up, like, over every single window. With like, slits cut out because you got so paranoid on crack that you wanted to, like, see if anybody was coming. Right. Like, he has too many crazy stories about, like, lighting himself on fire and, like, score. It's, like, more about the score. I think the scoring for him and hotels. Well, he's also in, like, Hunter Biden. He's not, like, lying and, like, covering up so much because he's the president's son. So <laughs> right. he's not just, like, omitting shit where he is doing crack in the White House. Right. You know he's Hunter's just, like, in. no, and then, like, I was in this hotel room for seven he days. Is, and he, he is maybe embellishing here and there. It's, definitely. I, the questions I have about, yeah, I guess the kids where he'll be on, like, a hunting trip because he never missed his, like, goose Okay, wait, I'm sorry. Hunting trips. The, this was, like, such a classic, this book being insane, <laughs> when he's just, like, so in the hole with my pillow, but he's also, like, we need to make $8.2 million, like, in profit this year. And then he's on a hunting trip, and he's, like, checking his sales figures, and he sees this huge spike. And then he, like, calls his salesperson, and he's, like, and he's, like, oh, it's because we bought, like, an ad on Fox News, and this is where his whole, like, Trump. journey into yeah. Trump begins is because his Trump his Fox News ads do really well for my pillow and then he's like I need to buy more ads on Fox News immediately like within the next like two hours otherwise like I'll miss the window to like make money this year or something but he's still on the hunting trip and it's improper etiquette to leave a hunting trip without killing a deer first so he has to uh, kill a deer but because of Minnesota law that season he has to kill a large doe well wouldn't you believe it a large okay. doe walks, walks in front of right my eyes in eyesight. front of him and I killed him in my I killed that 42 buck and then I had a pre- premonition so he has a lot of premonitions but it's just like you had to shoot a large doe so that that you could buy more ads on Fox News with minutes. I mean, is that minutes? not the like, most Trump, like, Fox <laughs> thing ever? So, so the, his whole also, like, conservative thing starts when he's, like, slightly getting off crack because he's like, so I wasn't a Democrat or Republican. I honestly had no idea what anything was. He keeps saying he was in a cultural coma for <laughs> right. 40 years. Even though he was, like, really into music and he curated the Schmitty, but this is why he was in a cultural coma. Like, he talks about curating his jukebox at um, Schmitty's. And it's like the most normal bar jukebox ever. Yes. It's literally just the Eagles greatest hits, Prince yeah. and Bob Seeger. And he's like, yeah, I wasn't going to put on top 40. I was going to do Skinner, Seeger, one Prince song. You're it was like, just the most, most normal, normal like jukebox. Midwestern dive bar jukebox I could possibly imagine. And he was like, I put special effort into curating songs I knew my regulars would love. They would love him. And we would, oh, you'd see a group of bikers breaking out singing like David Cassidy. I guess he was saying like he wasn't going to put like a Nirvana CD on or like a, well, he doesn't like rap. Right. Anything but rapper country. Yeah, well, so he likes country. when he is, but he doesn't even seem like that so in the country. Oh, well, because he's remember when time. he gets arrested? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's in jail for 30 days, and then all of the other inmates are singing rap and hip hop songs. And he goes, and to quote Diane Keaton, and something's got to give, he's very <laughs> just like, uh, I'm sorry, I don't get it. Why does every word have to rhyme with bitch? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I didn't like this music. It was degrading to women. So then he's like, I <laughs> then he want to change the tune. No, remember. And then yeah, he... so then he leads the entire prison oh, yeah, yeah. In, in a Disney song. In It's a Small World After All. Which is so creepy and yeah. Christian. And then they all think but he's, he's not even Christian yet. Yeah. Weird. 
he just like I think that's just him like literally not knowing anything but why he's trying to sing like a you know a Bob Seger track or whatever right like night moves. I guess like those are a little bit harder to just like. I don't know get if you can like get a around. prison to do. Like, I mean, you could moves. do old time rock and roll, but I think he knew like because if you start like in your prison and you're just being like a little too tall, could lose a few pounds. People aren't gonna be like, oh shit, in. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I would do that. Be like try to like thinking I know the lyrics to a song yeah. and then like leave <laughs> karaoke. I'd be like, father of mine. I- Tell me, where did you live? And I'm like, come on, boys. <laughs> um, anyway, then they think he's insane. But back, so the Trump thing, blah, blah, blah. Basically, he's like in his factory. This is years later. He's quick crack, I think. And like a news station calls. It's ABC in New York. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're saying, do you want to put an ad on our show for this, for Don Imus? And he says, no, because I put an ad on like a local Chosco radio station once and it didn't work. So I'm not going to do it again. And he's like. But because of my Christian faith, someone overheard me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that happens is a premonition because of his faith. And Do you, that, he's and kind everyone, of male Caputo. Yeah, no, it's everything This, is, this is one, this book is going to be new canon. Two, like, his spirit is premonition. Premonition is just any thought he had. Yeah. Like, when he has a premonition of what his photo is going to look like when he takes a photo with Trump. And it's just a photo of Trump with, like, memorabilia in the background. It's like, well... That's the most normal photo to have with, <laughs> yeah. like, an elected official. He's like, and I had this idea. And there would be all these framed photos behind us. Why would I even think that? And then when I did meet Trump and we took the photo, it looked exactly like the one in my dream. You're like, yeah, that's... Yeah. But, and it's like, there was a moment where they were going to take a photo somewhere else. And then Trump is like, no, let's take a photo in front of all my, like accolades it's like of course trump would do that <laughs> have you met the guy i mean come on the hello. ego hello narcissism. i'm sorry <laughs> so new york radio calls and they're like do you want to put an ad on don imus and he's he never says, heard of don imus he's, who's this don imus cultural fellow? coma yeah cultural coma and then and so he flies to new york city that's but, also insane they're like not only do we want like your ads but you should like fly to new york to meet imus this is another thing where I'm why just, isn't like, fucking better help flying us to the better help hq it's probably in this building <laughs> <laughs> no they are so dumbo based <laughs> yeah unless they're just like actually we're based in vancouver <laughs> yeah you should come and um and better help us fly you. us to vancouver we will pay for our own lodging yes but we would like ground transport to your <laughs> hq <laughs> <laughs> to have a meeting Greyhound with your, is fine or Frontier with bus lines. With your CMO. <laughs> <laughs> so he meets with Imus. So then Imus comes in and he's like this like thin cowboy and is old and is grumpy. And he's like, wow, look at this amazing man. And I is like, who the fuck are you? But then he shows him the pillow. And Imus likes the pillow. And Imus like, you're crazy. And he's like, no, you're crazy. And they start doing ads. And then someone is like, you should do an infomercial. And he's like, no, infomercials are desperate. But, but I don't know. Every time, okay, every single page of this book is him just being like, and what would happen next would be something that would change, change the, the course world. of my life. And, and it's like, it's, well, I guess like technically everything changes the course of your life. Especially every time he meets like a new, like he's still being so crack addict in this way where he'll just meet a person and he'll be like, what happened next? It was a conversation that changed my life. We stayed up for seven days doing crack and talking about our feelings and our past lives. Okay. And it's like this, I, you know who I want to know what she looks like is Rachel, his, his oh, like crack the girlfriend, medium crack girlfriend, yeah. post divorce, yeah. pre the Christian, because I bet she was like hotter and like a, Kind of a... I think that she looked like the most haggard babysitter alive. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think she was like hot in like a really fucked up, like haggard addict way. Yeah, like just like that, sunken like sunken brunette, so sunken brunette, like dry, Thin. crimped, long <laughs> yes. hair, like scrunchy, like huge, messy. driving like a huge, also a huge Chevy Blazer. Yeah, they're all driving these like big messy Chevys. Karen. His first leaves wife, and leaves first him. best friend, Steve. Steve. <sighs> Reminds me of that Ray Lynn line. Um, Daddy got sober. Mom, I got his best friend. Yeah. It's literally that. <laughs> okay, but this is another night where he's like also counting cards, but also gambling. And is also like a million dollars in the <laughs> hole on my pillow and like going through a breakup and addicted to crack. <laughs> 
Progressive slot machines were relatively new at the time. The big draw was that the jackpot just kept building until someone won it. That night, the jackpots at the Flamingos 3 Progressive slots were up to $1.5 million. Winning that kind of money was just a fantasy, of course. Still, I thought, wow, that's all I'd need. I'd sit there and plugged all three machines for a while. I was winning some and losing some when this young guy and his family walked up behind me. It was the kid's 21st birthday. Do you mind if we play one of the machines, he asked? The kid and his family only wanted one pull, just to say he'd done it. Sure, go ahead, I said. After all, it was his birthday. I stepped aside. The kid plugged in three silver dollars. It's also like, what decade is it? And he pulled the lever. Then I heard some of the worst sounds I'd ever heard in my life. The machine started to jingle and ring and flash bright lights. The kid and his family leapt into the air, then started laughing and hugging each other. The kid had won the jackpot. For a couple of months, I stood there in shock. I'd been one pull away, that pull away from 1.5 million. Anyway, then he goes on and he does found um, my pillow or whatever. But and he's like, I'm still just so mad that that family didn't give him any money. It's like it's the slot machine well, he was sitting at. It's like this is why I'm just almost like, did that happen? Happen, right? Where I'm like, that and is then the fa- so like this insane. family who was just like little Freddie just wants a shot. Like they didn't, they took it and were like, bye, bitch. Like and they see doesn't... this like insanely bedraggled alcoholic sad guy like just pulling the lever all night, and they weren't just like, oh, you can have 50k. Right? No. No, I don't buy it, Mike. I just, yeah, I don't. Because I could also see it maybe like he walked away and then like he saw them winning like 30 minutes later or something. Yeah, it's you know? a little more likely that it's like he was in a casino and walking and saw like a kid win. Yeah. And was just like, I gave him but his shot. But you know, it's a great story. And I'm he's all a storyteller. Story. Celebrity Book Club. My, My segments. segments. What, what does she eat? What does she wear? How does she live? What does she eat? What does she eat? So I mean, obviously like steak and lobster in like a casino way as like his cop meal. But like what is he eating on the daily? He, like He was so heart attack cop meals for like decades. But also probably not eating a lot of the time. Like, yeah, because he was going hardly... eight days without eating. Yeah, he was and then would get a casino kind of meal. You know, I bet sometimes he's making himself at lunch just... A peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, sad. But I guess like Wonder Bread is so. I feel like not in a sad way. I just mean like okay, kids, just like, like oh, you know quick... what it is. You're actually be, he's being so Padma Lakshmi about it because she just <laughs> <laughs> go on. <laughs> well, she there. She I saw this one thing where she was just like, well, I eat for work, and so oh, sometimes like I love to have a, a very very simple mm. snack to keep my appetite at bay. Mm, um, and right. she just like wants a peanut butter sandwich maybe she doesn't even have jelly but I see what you mean where it's like similar way where he's just like I'm working at a warehouse it's fast like let me just make a pb and sandwich and like fuel and keep fuel moving fuel up and then like dinner like now that he is a like, Christian and like sober like he probably and like he does love to like party like I feel like he is like you know BB, he loves like BBQ and sausages and burgers and like he's grilling them. Yeah, like, dad grill. Barbecue. I mean, the fact that the wife is now like more culty and like not such this just like buxom lass that I was imagining. Yeah, I I'm, I'm. It's making me think that she is being a little bit more like we're having heart healthy like asparagus pasta tonight or something. Like creamy. It's like creamy She's... light options. It's like a salmon. Yeah, I think it's chicken. I think it's like bow tie pasta with like a creamy and sauce she's, and she's buying some sort of like l- like l- pre-made low like cow, Purdue, low like locale chicken like the chicken itself says oh, it's like low yes. fat or something it's like, and it's like out it has like pre-grill marks on it you know even though they're like billionaires she's buying like this weird and then I think when he like takes her chicken and they're so like home plate and fresh plate or whatever oh I actually could see them doing hello fresh yeah I could also like it. I feel like she is so evil stepmom in this way, where he's coming home and oh, like, and she's poisoning, and him. he's like reaching for his favorite brand of you know soda beverages, and mm. like she's replaced it with diet. Yeah, and she's getting the diet Lowry's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like diet mar- Lowry's. Marinade. And the kids come over and they're like, Dad, you used to love like Lowry's on our like barbecue chicken night, yeah. and he's like, Well, kids, you're gonna love Kendra's. Sweet mustard, low fat, like 
steamed chicken and they're all kind of like okay yeah okay what does he wear well now he's so like Katy perry's parents and wearing like big so much onyx and (laughs) onyx and like (laughs) onyx cufflinks that are crosses also it's it's like like you know it's always the blue button down like and blue suit and then just yes so much onyx jewelry Um, and then like on the weekend well there you know he's always so like before he becomes my pillow like so like suits like i was in pants you know khakis and a polo yeah well because the first time he wears a suit when he has that meeting with the like the fabric distributor in new york because he thinks that the infomercial is going to do gangbusters and he's like i need to order so much fabric like on loan on credit wait and that whole scene where he like tricks his friends and does have a garage full of fabric Oh, yeah, and he insane. has, like, the $30,000 in cash, like, in a duffel bag, <laughs> right. like, in a secret truck, and the cops are there, and, like, he's about to get arrested, but he has the deed in his hand, and he, like, snorts the coke as the and, helicopters are swooping I mean, in. Uh, obviously, like, his 80s and 90s style is, like, grail-worthy, and he's in no. so many, like, kooky Hawaiian shirts, and, yeah, like... it's it's very... Flat brims, and, like... bartender. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like pleated khaki pants, kind of like the ones I'm wearing now, and new balances, dad balances. Dad, he's total dad core, and like is wearing that shirt of like cocktails you have, and just like is wearing all my and new think, corduroy hats. And I think now his like off duty style is just like dry fit Marshalls. It's like dry fit Helly Hansen, dry fit Helly Hansen, and like. I don't even think he's wearing that much, like, Trump merch. No. Because he's like, and everyone was signing the famous Make America Great Again hats. When he gets invited to the Hamptons, he's so like, wowee, this is fancy. Yeah. Um, How does she live? I mean, let's just say it. Heavy. The bed. The, the bed <laughs> is high. high. The higher the bed, the closer to God. But do you think it's one? Do you think he's like so branded in this way where he just uses one my pillow because that's all he needs i'm still imagining like five layers of pillows oh but are they all my or is no i like... think there's the decorative that they do the yes the classic straight straight couple taking pillows take off, off the bed. and then there's like maybe two my pillows or maybe he's like just one that's all i need i think there's four of my pillows on okay. the bed. that makes if more i sense, were him i would have four i would have four I think that the furniture is very heavy. I think the house is extremely big. It's a light carpet. It's huge. There's workout rooms. There's wrought iron. Multiple. There's heavy mahogany. There's like... A lot of fake plants, I think. There's the... Yeah. The, the office has lots of he probably has framed a, like checks and old... You know, the first check, the last check. The Schmitty's contract, the Schmitty's contract. that he bought back. Anyway, yeah, the house um, is huge and it's sparsely massive. Decorated. But the, yeah, it's something like wrought iron, like looking over the living room or something like that. But I'm sure it's like fun to hang out in their like nine person recliner like TV area. Yeah, where I'm sure he's and like only allowed like to watch like certain amount of like movies. Like Top Gun is approved, but like not Twenty Seven Dresses. <laughs> <laughs> She's like defagged. The, like... <laughs> yeah. Um. Who are you in the book? Am I Ivanka Trump? <laughs> right. And you are such a beautiful, articulate um, young articulate. American woman. Articulate. Good kid. Good kid. I don't know. Are we just like regulars at Schmidt's? Are we just like the Democrats he meets at a national prayer breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait. Maybe you're his daughter. Who? draws up the my designs the logo. logo no because i'm getting very good at photoshop yeah so am i karen i don't first know wife? i do feel like we are regulars and schmitties because we're just being like wait yes we're going to so vegas schmitties, randomly and yeah. we're like taking any opportunity to like do anything random and fun because yeah. we love life we love life and like total dive bars and then maybe we do start going to floyd's and he gets mad at us and we're like i don't know schmitty's is getting sketchy yeah schmitty's just getting kind of sad and now we're going to floyd's (laughs) we're moving our softball team there um i give this book 10 out of 10 pillows it's like honestly it's so amazing and you need to read it Listen to the audiobook, buy a pillow. Yes, we're getting paid for this, this episode. <laughs> I, I'm very curious about the pillow. No, I when I read yeah. this book, 
like I was a hundred pages in and I was like, I feel like I've read five books already. Like it's there's so, so much more happens in this book than I, the typical celebrity memoir. Where you're like, what? How old are you? And he's like, also, oh, this book like, is so self-published. That's what's like the sentences are self-published. Just the paper is self-published. And like he kind of messes up sometimes in the audiobook too in this way. That's it's very like, authentic. Anyway, um, yeah. yeah, the paper feels very like from a printer. <laughs> oh, I just opened it. Yeah, it's Lindell Publishing. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, that's Steven, gonna this do has it been for us. Grand. It's been an incredible journey, from crack addict to CEO to podcaster. <laughs> Best. Best. Summary Book Club is presented by Prolon Projects. Uh, I owe them about two hundred thousand dollars, but I swear I'll I'm gonna pay them back. The show is produced by Benjamin Frisch, who is my step uncle, who loaned me ten thousand dollars. With editorial support from Leon A. Funk, Andrew Parsons, and Arlene Revelo and Madeline Kaplan, um, they once told me to get the hell out of Dumbo, but now uh, I think they've welcomed me back, and we are in business together. Our production manager is Persia Verlin. Um, she is a woman of God and has turned me on to Jesus. Our intern is Noah John. Um, he is my son. We go hunting all the time. And I'm sorry, Noah. And I, I'm sorry I've done drugs while hunting. Original theme song is by Stephen Phillips' horse. I love his music so much. I'm going to go see him live in an arena. Artwork by Teddy Blanks at Chips and Y. It's an amazing, amazing artist. It's sold on my website. Sold on my website. Sold on my website. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CBC The Pod. Subscribe to your favorite podcast app. Leave us a review, please. It means the world to me. It would save my family. And don't forget to tell your friends about us. I don't have any friends, but now I have friends, and you're my friends about us. And don't forget to go to patreon.com. That's patreon.com slash CBC for access to the VIP launch, our exclusive bonus podcast. Please buy that today and save my life. I'm in tons of debt.